Hello, everyone. Hi again. In this chapter, which is entitled Declaring the Good News Without Let Up, 1942 to 1975, we're reaching the end of the chapter and they're de dealing with their work in the 1960s. Some of the publications are being mentioned, some are not. And then maybe their most controversial publication is being mentioned in this section. We've noticed so far that Nathan Knorr has been very prominent in all of the organization going on in this period from Rutherford's death to, 19, to the 1960s. Suddenly in this section, Fred Franz becomes prominent. Mm -hmm. So let's think about that. It starts out with the, the subhead, which is, quote, say, what does this 1975 mean, question mark, unquote. The witnesses had long shared the belief that the thousand-year reign of Christ would follow after 6,000 years of human history. But when would 6,000 years of human existence end? The book, Like Life Everlasting in Freedom of the Sons of God, released at a series of district conventions held in 1966, pointed to 1975. Right at the convention, as the brothers examined the contents, the new book triggered much discussion about 1975. At the convention held in Baltimore, Maryland, F. W. Franz gave the concluding talk. He began by saying, Just before I got on the platform, a young man came to me and said, Say, what does this 1975 mean? Brother Franz then referred to the many questions that had arisen as to whether the material in the new book meant that by 1975 Armageddon would be finished and Satan would be bound. He stated, in essence, It could, but we are not saying. All things are possible with God, but we are not saying. And don't any of you be specific in saying anything that is not going that is going to happen between now and nineteen seventy five. But the big point of all is this, dear friends, time is short, time is running out. No question about that. And they have that in the margin as well. The big point of all of this is, dear friends, time is short. Mm -hmm. So obviously that's the takeaway they want you to yeah. bring from this uh, revision of their own history in 1993 when this book comes out. Then there's another paragraph. In the years following 1966, many of Jehovah's Witnesses acted in harmony with the spirit of that council. However, other statements were published on this subject, and some were likely more definite than advisable. Mm -hmm. This was acknowledged in the Watchtower of March 15, 1980, page 17. But Jehovah's Witnesses were also cautioned for to concentrate mainly on doing Jehovah's will and not to be swept up by dates and expectations of an early salvation. Mm. Well, we live during this period. Yeah. And I remember when that article in the mm -hmm. Watchtower, 1980, four and a half years after yeah. the embarrassment, when that article came out, I remember discussing that with some of my best friends in the Watchtower, and we all kind of looked at each other and thought, well, it's too little, it's not being direct enough as to their responsibility. It's not really an apology, it's blaming the people, I remember yeah. being the, the comment, that some people were taking it too seriously, I don't know. Uh, but I remember a conversation, and and I don't know if it was just before 1980 or just after, but we'd already moved to the area where I met you. Um, and I was still in school, and the the elder who had been the the main elder in the congregation where I grew up as a little kid. Well, there were no elders in those days, right? It was just the congregation overseer. Okay, so yeah. so he was the head guy in yeah. that congregation. The bishop. And and he, I think he had arranged for a couple to study with my parents, but he had studied with them as well. And he had stated that they, they had actually, they were talking about 1975, and I think my parents were saying, well, they never actually said it. And he said, yes, they did. And I remember being kind of shocked 
at, at him saying that. And he mentioned this book that they just mentioned in here. Life Everlasting. Yeah, as, mm-hmm. as showing it. And I remember we went and found the book and he showed the place. And, mm-hmm. and then the conclusion of it all in the discussion was, well, well, they've made a mistake and we can forgive one mistake. And that satisfied me at the time. But later when we were leaving and I started to read material from that time period, I was quite shocked. I think you have some photostat pictures of yeah. some of the articles written around that time. And I felt very uncomfortable. This is from the Setnar's Questions for Jehovah's Witnesses Who Love the Truth brochure. Mm-hmm. Here's two photostats of the articles that were c- coming out in 1968. By the way, this Awake article, that Awake special issue of October 8th, 1968, the very first Watchtower publication I read, mm-hmm. uh, fully that is, and I was quite convinced by its arguments back then that the yeah. time was near. So t- just read out what the titles of those articles are. Why are you looking forward to 1975? That might seem to be a caution, but it's not yeah. if you read the article. And what will the 1970s bring? And then yeah. they uh, highlight the fact that when this article came out, you're only seven years to go till 1975. Yeah. Wasn't what? there another one that was it's later than you think? Well, that's the same article. Oh, okay. That's a sp- special issue that we were yeah. to take door to door. So I do remember, though, reading these and and being very distressed to find, well, you know, if I was seven or seven or six and eight for these articles, so I'm not reading magazines at that point. I was a kid. Or the Life Everlasting uh, book, which yeah, is when you're I, six Yeah, I wasn't paying attention yeah. to any of these, really, you know. <laughs> I was a kid. And I remember when I did look at those things and, and thought, okay, so they, they really were pushing people to think mm-hmm. that it was going to be 1975 and, and charts if, that ended with 1975 and also but it was all framed within the 6,000 year chronology yeah and that's where you they seem to take an exit here that from responsibility they are actually avoiding responsibility Fred Francis saying we're not being specific don't be yeah. specific but your articles were very specific and by the way yeah. in this one the one on the left what which is why are you looking forward to 1975? That's August 15th, 1968, Watchtower. Mm-hmm. Later in that article, on page 499 of the bound volume, by the way, mm-hmm. they say it may involve only a difference of weeks or months, not years. So they're not really giving themselves an out. They're yeah. saying somewhere around 1975, it's got to happen. And the whole reason is because they've already put in place this generation. So they've got everybody watching for the number partaking, dwindling Mm -hmm. over time. Not true anymore, but I mean at the time, that's what people were looking at and they're thinking, these people are dying out, it's got to be soon, it's got to be soon. So in effect, you have set a date. You may be not given an exact date, but you've set because you've set a generation. You've put a limit on the chronology. Yeah. And, and of course, they don't back off that one until the mid-90s. Very interesting. This book, the Proclaimer's book, is published when Fred Franz is still alive. Yeah. So, yeah, the fact that he's prominent here and, and it's a note of caution... Mm-hmm. Well, Fred Franz is writing these books, and he's not being cautious all yeah. the time, although... You know, I remember thinking at the time, well, they are and they aren't. I remember when I was pioneering, I, I was I wish they'd signal clearly. And I was thinking of that scripture in Paul Corinthians where he talks about the trumpet has to sound clearly. Yeah. They're saying it's got to be around 75, but on the other hand, they're saying no man knows the day of the hour. Which one do you want us yeah. to think about all the time? And they're saying, like the end of this, this statement from him, the time is short, the time is running out. Well, they were saying that back then. I'm I'm not a chicken anymore, and <laughs> and I was a kid then when yeah. they were saying this. And it gets worse. Like John Elliot, the elder that you're talking yeah. about, yeah. is probably long dead now. Mm-hmm. And and that was something like 45 or 50 years ago. He was telling your parents this. All that generation are either dying or already gone. Yeah. And and what's not being said here, and I think it's very carefully skirted. <clears throat> is the connection of all this to the 6,000 years. 
Yeah, the chronology. Well, look at what look how they phrase this in in the first paragraph again. Yeah. The witness, witnesses had long shared the belief that the thousand-year reign of Christ would follow after six thousand years of human history. Well, that's true. Yeah. But what they don't admit here is that for the first seventy or so years of their history, mm -hmm. they were saying that the six thousand years had ended in around eighteen seventy-two, eighteen seventy-two, or eighteen seventy-three. They held on to that belief until a book called *The Kingdom Is at Hand* came out in the early forties, when Rutherford was already dead. They were now saying that, well, no, it runs out in around 19, 1972. Mm -hmm. So they've changed their mind about the chronology, which means in the minds of the kids that were around at your age in yeah. 19, early 40s during the war, now you have a new deadline, which is in the 1970s. Yeah. So even before the Life Everlasting book comes out, you've already kind of put that in the minds of every faithful Jehovah's Witness as being the outer limit. So, and I think you have to remember, they call themselves the faithful and discreet slave. This is not discreet. There's no way, and with it going back and forth, sometimes caution, sometimes not, that is not discreet. Even if it was just once, it still wouldn't be discreet. No, your your hints have are heavy hints. Why are you making okay. all these heavy hints about the 1970s? Because you want people to be mm -hmm. agitated to the point of sacrificing. Yeah. For the sake of what? Well, Rutherford, in his day, it was sacrificing. He wanted to see it all end before he died, but he died. Yeah. And Fred Franz, I think, if he, if we give him credit for some degree of sincerity, they all want to see it happen within their lifetimes, yeah. as we did. So, so I, we still get people in our comment section saying things like, well, at least they're warning people. They're warning people. Mm -hmm. But if you're giving people... Uh, a, a, a time frame you are setting a date and you're not getting them to think about uh, you, you you're not you're not encouraging them to serve God out of love you know when when Christians do and Christians do talk about the second coming but they're they're focused on Christ is going to come and mm. rule and we're going to be with them yes so that's their focus they don't give you a date. You don't mm -hmm. know if it's going to be in your lifetime, but they say be ready. Mm -hmm. Every generation of Christian is told that. Be ready. It will happen. But they don't put any date to it. But So they do talk about this. They do. And the big difference for me is not only the centrality of Christ, which is absolutely there, if you know anything about evangelicals. The center mm -hmm. is Christ. Even in the liberal churches, the center is Christ. Mm-hmm. But the biggest difference is it's not the gospel. You're not preaching the second coming, Armageddon, yeah. and paradise earth. You're preaching yeah. Christ, and part of preaching Christ is preaching that he will come again visibly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's our link? Our oh, link I think I wrote it down, but I can't read it. Is, uh, <laughs> the new chronology. Uh, yeah, Edmund Gross has talked about this in, in, oh, yeah. in, in one of his works. He has talked about the fact that they set up the new date back in the 1940s. The 1972 date. The 1972 yeah. date in the book, The Kingdom is at Hand. So we'll put in a link to that specific video where Gross talks about this change that was mm -hmm. hardly, well, it's not acknowledged here, but it was hardly acknowledged even in the 40s and 50s. But, mm -hmm. but suddenly in the mid-60s, Fred Franz starts getting more specific. Good. See you next time.